Hello everyone, back to tuning in today's second video doing the ECMW 30 day forecast for the UK and the rest of Europe as well for today's uh, 30 day forecast. So we're going to look at mean solar pressure, 500 millibar height temperature and precipitation uh, anomalies for the next four weeks and it's going to take us well into July. We will show you weeks five and six data as well because why not? The charts are there so you might as well have a look at them. But of course, primarily, this is a 30 day uh, look ahead. So I shall get on that for you very sure. I should say that the first we really save was our 7 a.m. upload. We've got a 10 to 14 day coming up for you later on. And then Stormwatch will return this evening. Uh, so I did a Stormwatch yesterday, but I had to take down uh, very quick. I won't go into the detail about uh, what happened, but uh, something was brought to my attention that served me a little bit. So uh, I thought the safest thing to do about was to take it down. And, uh, and so uh, it'll be back, though. I uh, have another Stormwatch for you this evening. Stormwatch shall rise uh, this evening. Right, let's uh, crack on then. So we're going to have a look at the uh, week one mean sea level pressure anomalies, uh, first of all. So uh, this is going to take us from uh, the 14th to the 21st of June, basically the week that we are currently in. So uh, Tony Moore has settled really through the western part of Europe, but uh, uh, low pressure sort of appearing around the western side of Europe, high pressure splitting in two, some of the ridge going to the east of Europe and to the northeast, and some of it pulling out into the middle of the Atlantic. Just means it's a rather more changeable and sort of unsettled type scene for the west of Europe, thundering through Spain and France and in towards southern parts of the UK as well, probably. And then a little bit more Atlantic driven away to the northwest up towards Iceland, for example. Obviously, the warmest, driest where it's like to be through central and eastern parts of Europe where you have this big ridge of high pressure. The 500 millibar height anomaly uh, for week one looks like that. So, again, trough of low pressure, below average heights extending through the western part of Europe. The ridge of above average heights, high pressure gradually slipping further eastwards and northeast. So, there is a trough into the southeast of Europe as well. Uh, so temperature anomalies uh, for week one uh, look like that. Generally, it's a warm sea across many parts of uh, Europe. It's a little bit cooler out to the far west and northwest. So uh, Ireland, western Scotland, for example, below average temperatures there. Uh, Spain and Portugal also going a little bit below average. But of course, it's anomalies too average. So it will still be hot through central southern parts of Spain. Um, even if it's like a degree or two below average, average, it'll still be very hot through southern Spain uh, at the end or in the last stages of uh, June. Also a bit below average on this eastern, southeastern side of uh, Europe. So a light from the Ukraine and the Black Sea down towards Greece and Turkey. Cooler than average temperatures there. And then we get this big area of warmer than average conditions stretching all the way from like northern and northeast Europe right way down to the central bowl of the Mediterranean. It includes like Germany, France, the Low Countries, much of Poland uh, as well, and up into Scandinavia, Denmark, and uh, southern parts of Sweden, for example, all coming out significantly hotter than average. On the temperature scale, we're talking about three to six degrees above average, so with those quite deep red colours. In the mare, we've got a freeway split, so Spain and Portugal a little bit, look a little bit cooler on average. The central bowl of the mare, from like eastern Spain to Italy, hotter than average. I mean, it goes cooler than average again, down towards Greece and Turkey. And precipitation-wise, week one, uh, we look like that. So it's going to be uh, wet and average in this far eastern, southeastern part of Europe, drier than average through the central and uh, many uh, many central and western parts of Europe, way back to Germany, and then it goes wetter than average again through like Spain and France, and of course it's going to be mainly with thunderstorms pushing northwards, so that gets into southern and eastern parts of England, although Ireland and Scotland drier than average, and then we run into the low pressure uh, from the Atlantic out to the north and west of the UK. Right, that's week one done. Let's have a look at week two then. It's going to take us from the 21st to 28th of June. Uh, we look like this. So, um, more on the centre of Western Europe this week. A bit of a change on what the ECM has shown in previous weeks. I think we've got low pressure here around Ireland and the UK coming in from off the Atlantic. At the same time, we've got some higher pressure down towards Spain and through the Med. And then that high pressure extends up the eastern part of uh, Europe or the eastern side of Europe 
into the northeast of Europe. So obviously the most unsettled weather with that is going to be for the far west and northwest. But many areas are actually under high pressure. Week 2, 500 millibar height anomaly shows that area of low pressure trough over and to the west of Ireland and the UK. The ridge is from southern Europe up to the east, up the east side and up to the northeast of the Europe. And again, in comes the jet stream doing something a little bit uh, like that. The uh, week 2 temperature anomaly from the 21st to 28th of June um, going to be cooler than average for the west of Europe, the far west of Europe. So Ireland, uh, western parts of, uh, of Britain into uh, western France and down Spain and Portugal, cooler than average through there. Anywhere from like eastern France uh, eastwards is basically warmer than average still under high pressure. And, and the hottest uh, temperatures uh, to average anyway uh, in the far north and northeast of Europe. So the northeast and Baltic sea areas back to northwestern parts of Russia. Still a little bit cooler now around Black Sea and down into the far southeast part of the Mediterranean. But generally also those hottest temperatures are being pushed eastwards a little bit. As we go through into uh, week two. For week two precipitation and on from 21st, 28th of June. Looks unsettled now. A uh, big change this on what the E7 has been showing in previous weeks actually. Big change this. Uh, unsettled and wetter than average uh, around the UK and Ireland. And also down into uh, northern parts of France as well. Um, and also affects some parts of southern Scandinavia. The driest weather is through southern uh, and eastern and northeastern parts of Europe. So pretty dry through the Mediterranean, to be honest, especially through the central uh, parts of the Med, and again, extending up the eastern side. But definitely the far north, northwest Europe is looking, is looking cooler and wetter uh, here for the final week of June. And it is a bit of a change what the ECM has been showing in previous weeks. So that one has crept up on us. Right, week three, 28th of uh, June to the 5th of July. Uh, so we're losing the signal now, seemingly. Um, so, so a little bit hard to decide. We've got some high pressure down towards uh, northern Spain and the Bay of Biscay. Looks like southern, southeast parts of Europe. Um, a little bit more unsettled through there. Otherwise, it's hard to decipher, actually, uh, what's going on in this week from a mean sea level pressure anomaly point of view. Uh, the 500 millibar height anomaly. Looks like high pressure is beginning to re-strengthen across many parts of Europe. We've got quite a big ridge here extending from, like, southern Europe northwards. So uh, that like, looks like it's gradually turning more unsettled many parts of Europe. There might be a trough uh, reappearing around the eastern side of Europe and probably still some low, low pressure uh, up here with the jet stream maybe doing something uh, a little bit like that. The uh, temperature anomaly for week three is warming up uh, generally across many parts of Europe. So looking pretty warm in most areas. Um, still a little bit uh, on the average to cool side for, for Ireland and the UK though. Uh, but otherwise, like from eastern England all the way down to Spain and then anywhere east of that, basically, it's warmer than average in this week. So quite a warm, hot scene through the first uh, full week of July. And the, uh, the um, week three precipitation anomaly looks largely drier than average through many parts uh, of Europe. And especially, again, focusing on like southern Europe, much of the Mediterranean will be hot and dry. In this week, if that comes off, I would have thought. Right, week four is the 5th through to the 12th of July. Uh, so this one looks a little bit uh, odd, really. We've got some high pressure uh, just towards the north of Scotland, between Scotland and Iceland. But it looks like there's just low pressure, actually, engulfing many parts of Europe. So quite what's going on there, I'm not sure. That looks very strange. Uh, let's have a look at the 500 millibar. Height anomaly. So I think the general idea is that we're taking the high pressure north uh, here. So so we're beginning to retrogress, retrogress even the high pressure retrogression of the high pressure northwards and northwestwards, uh, uh, which is probably then going to send slow pressure and the jet stream southwards. So so the reason the mean sea level pressure anomaly is showing so much low pressure across Europe is that a trough is probably setting up underneath the ridge which is becoming like a bit of a blocking feature there in uh, week four. 
you expect the temperature on to be cooling down quite quickly, and that's what it's showing. So there, are, there is still some warmer than average uh, temperatures left through, like the Med, and into the far eastern and northeast part of Europe. However, most parts of Europe are, particularly western, and um, some central parts of Europe are reverting back to average. And in the far west and northwest, cooler than average is hinted at anyway through the UK, through Ireland uh, as well. So, so becoming cooler, and I would have thought becoming a little bit more unsettled as well, probably. Um, so we see that the drive and average condition in week four are gradually retreating away towards the northwest. Looks like particularly northern and eastern parts of Europe are turning uh, a little bit wetter. It's a weaker signal, but I would have thought many parts of Europe are turning cooler and more unsettled as northern blocking begins to set up. Right, so that's the 30-day forecast. So we'll just let's say through weeks five and six. This is how uh, week five is looking. It's the 12th through to the 19th of July. Uh, so this week's setting up a Scandinavian high. Um, now, Scandinavian highs in July can be hot, actually, for northern Europe as we bring in the wind from the east. This one is going a long way north, however. This Scandinavian high is going all the way up towards Svalbard. So I'm not sure that the origins of the air we battle are going to be particularly warm. It could still be bringing in, like, very warm easterlies, but it might also be bringing in sort of uh, north easterlies in sort of west parts of Europe. Uh, some low pressure through uh, the Mediterranean as well. Let's have a look at the 500 millibar height anomaly so uh, again you can see although this is high pressure towards scandinavia it is kind of like northern blocking uh really it goes to the to the north of scandinavia towards uh, towards the arctic uh really so so um the origins of the air bat will be quite interesting where the origins are originating from model is warming things up across uh, many northern and western parts of europe however it is still cool and average row uh, to the east of Europe and the precipitation anomaly very weak signals perhaps a little bit on the drier side through northern and western uh, parts of Europe and then week six data uh, five, uh, mean cell pressure anomaly 19th 26th of July looking like that uh, so again quite a bit of high pressure like uh, within the northern latitude here so uh, again high pressure is focused around Scandinavia but also towards Greenland and Iceland also got a ridge in the Atlantic. Um, so again, this could be a signal for cooler and more unsettled conditions, to be honest. The uh, 500 millibar height to normally though looks like that, and just, just a bit of a ridge through central parts of Europe. So we're just about managing to hang on to higher pressure through uh, Europe, but it looks quite quite uh, you know quite odd really in terms of a mean cell pressure anomaly. And then the week six uh, temperature anomaly is largely warmer than average still through many parts of uh, Europe. And the week six uh, precipitation anomaly, no particular signal of any use. I think it all gets rather sketchy when we get to weeks five and six, to be honest. But it is, a, we have got a signal here, I reckon, for higher pressure to be going north uh, through July, which will probably usually send the jet stream southwards uh, in the summer and send a trough of low pressure into uh, Western Europe. So the model could be, although it doesn't look too bad in terms of a temperature and precipitation on your point of view, I think the model could be hinting actually at quite a coolish and more unsettled July. Interestingly, a bit of a change of what CFS has been showing in previous uh, weeks. But it's all a long way off, uh, of course. The more immediate situation for the rest of June is that we are turning cooler and more unsettled through western, northwestern parts of Europe. Probably going back to some higher pressure in early July, bringing some uh, warmer, drier weather. And then if high pressure goes north, becomes a normal blocking feature, then, of course, we might start setting up quite an unsettled and cool pattern later on into July. We'll have to see. Right, so that's the first day look ahead uh, done and dusted for you uh, this week. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks so much, everybody. Dream that. We'll be back later on with your 10 to 14 day. That will include all the regular features. And, of course, we've got Stormwatch returning, rising uh, to this evening. So uh, check out the rest of today's videos. For this one, that's all for now, though, and thanks for watching.